test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. Customer phoning a company representative to complain about her new purchase. First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello, is this the Dynamo Motorcycle Company? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Well, I have an instruction manual here for your new electric motorcycle, but I'm not satisfied with the purchase at all. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but don't worry. I'm sure we can sort this out. Before we do anything, can you tell me the model number? Ah, at the top of the instruction manual here it gives the model number RTY34. Er, uh, TY34. OK. Now, what's the nature of your complaint? It's many things, actually. The biggest problem is that you say in your manual that the battery will take the motorcycle 30 kilometres. That's right. Well, it's lucky to take me eight. The battery is usually flat by then, often leaving me stuck at the side of the road. Are you sure you're charging it correctly? I'm fairly sure. I follow all the instructions and plug it in for a long time. And are you sure you charge it for the required three hours? I charge it until the charging light goes off, and that's two hours, so that should be enough. And there's a serious design fault with this motorcycle. When you're riding it, there's no meter to show you how much power is left, so you actually don't know when the machine is going to stop working. There's a voltage gauge. Yes, but that tells you nothing. The needle fluctuates about from 55 to 45, so whatever it says is meaningless. According to the manual, you're meant to charge the battery if the needle falls under 50 volts. But even when you charge it, it can go below 45. As I said, the needle just waves all over the place. The result is that I'm always worried that the bike will leave me stranded in the middle of nowhere. Well, I'm sorry about that. Sure, but what are you going to do about it? Unfortunately, we don't have a refund policy. But if you take the bike to one of our shops, our mechanics will look at it. Perhaps there's a problem that we can fix. The gauge, for example. The other problem is the battery. I actually weighed it, and it's almost six kilograms. Yet you say in your manual that it weighs only three. I can barely pick the thing up, so it's not three kilograms at all. Maybe you purchased the wrong model by mistake. I doubt that very much. Basically, I think I've been defrauded, and I'd like to know what you're going to do about it. All right, I'll put you through to our complaints department. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Hello? Complaints department here. Uh, apparently you have a complaint? Yes, I do. Let me tell you all about... It's, it's all right. Our representative has already informed me about your problem. It's probably just a misunderstanding. I'm sure we can work something out. Right now, I need to take down some details. All right. Can I have your name, please? Jessie Parkinson. That's J-E-S-S-I-E and Parkinson. P-A-R-K-I-N-S-O-N. Parkinson. All right. What shall we list this complaint under? Parts, service or performance? Well, the meter isn't accurate at all, so that's parts, isn't it? 
Yes, perhaps, but you do feel more generally that the motorcycle doesn't meet the operational standards as advertised, so it's probably better to tick performance here. Can we tick both, parts and performance? No, we can only tick one, so let's not call it parts. We'll go with performance. Now, we may post some further forms and questionnaires to you, so would you mind giving me your address? Certainly, it's 45 Melrose Road. Melrose, M E L and Rose. Okay, now your phone number? Just use my mobile phone. That's 0928982453. Four five three. Okay, and if we have any follow up questions, what time is best for ringing you? Morning, afternoon, night time? Well, I work as a secretary from nine to five, but I do get a lunch break which gives me some free time. This break used to be twelve thirty to one thirty, but then it changed to an hour later, so it's best to ring me at two pm since the break now starts at one thirty. All right. Uh, that's all for now. We just need to do our own investigation and we'll probably ring you back tomorrow. I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a teacher helping high school students visiting from an overseas school to fill in a school excursion permission note. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning, students. My name is Mrs Brown, and I'm in charge of the school excursion next week. Please take out your school excursion permission note so you can fill it in. For insurance purposes, this note must be signed by your guardian or the group leader. First of all, fill in the name of your class. Everyone here is in 3A, aren't they? So write 3A where it says class. We're going to the Blue Mountains, which is great. So this is the school excursion to the Blue Mountains. The day we leave is Monday. That's Monday, June 10. We are travelling by bus all the way. So we don't have to worry about changing trains or anything like that. The bus will leave from the front gate at 8 a.m. I know we usually use the side gate, but because of the roadworks, we will be using the front gate when we leave. However, when we return, the roadwork will be complete, so we'll use the side gate. We expect to be back at 6 p.m. It's going to be a lovely day. Your teachers will give you tasks to do when we arrive. We'll provide fruit and fruit juice on the bus but you must bring your own lunch. While we're on the excursion, we'll be moving around a lot in some fairly rough country. Be very careful to wear strong shoes. It's very important that you look after your feet very well. Now, does anyone have any questions they want to ask? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. No questions? OK, I'd just like to fill in a few more details. The bus should arrive in the Blue Mountains at 11am. We'll have time to do the first of our tasks before lunch. The bus is not a new one, but it does carry one piece of special equipment, a first aid kit. I certainly hope we won't have to use it, but it's nice to know it's there in case we have a medical emergency. The other class on this excursion is 3B, so I know it'll be a good day. The last time 3A and 3B went out together was a thoroughly successful excursion. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a student union officer's speech. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi there. May I wish you a very warm welcome to Ealing College and more especially to the Student Union. The Student Union is run by four sabbatical officers, of which I am one. As the President, I am charged with the overall day-to-day -day running of the Union itself according to established policies within the Constitution. We also have a brilliant staff team who'll help us and you'll meet them when you have five minutes to drop in and see us. The last year has seen the Student Union grow from incorporating a bar and a few offices with a small shop into being a thriving concern which controls, to its credit, two bars, a cafe bar or restaurant, a shop, a comprehensive welfare department and numerous offices. All this has been achieved by sheer hard work and dedication on the part of last year's sabbatical team and staff who overcame many obstacles and teething problems but won through in the end. This year our aims as a team will be to consolidate on what has already been achieved and to secure the future of the Union. With the new post of Vice President, Social and Communications, our main emphasis will be on communications within the College, which has always proved a problem in the past, but one which we hope to improve upon this year. One way will be the regular publication of a student union magazine, so all you budding journalists come on down. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. We are very aware that a lot of you have never had any contact with student unions before and don't know what they are or what they can do for you. So basically, here's a quick rundown. If you have any problems at all, either when you start college or throughout your time here, don't hesitate to drop in in the SU office in the North Building and see Pat, our office assistant. She will be able to help you with most of your day-to-day -day general inquiries, 
or if she can't, she will direct you to one of our staff who can. Myself and the other three vice presidents are here every day, and if you need to see us, just fix a time with Pat, and we'll be only too happy to help you. By the way, queries or problems can range from a late grant check, finding a place to live and academic matters, right through to the best places to eat, directions to the bar, or somebody blocking you in the car park. We'll give anything our best shot. Please remember, while you're at Ealing, that going to college is not just about education. Make sure you enjoy yourself as well, because believe me, time will fly once you're here. Ealing is a really good place to live, as there is lots to see and do. And don't forget, the metropolis of central London is only 20 minutes away by tube. Finally, the Student Union is an organisation run by students for students. So if there is anything you don't agree with, or you have any new ideas, please come along to the Union General Meetings and don't be afraid to speak up. Or you could give up a little of your time and stand for the Executive Committee, which is made up of students who help us out with lots of interesting things. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the sabbaticals of the last two years who have worked so hard. My very special thanks goes to Winston, Martin and Peter and all the staff who not only did a great job but have been my good friends as well. Lots of luck and success for your year at Ealing. Work hard, but play hard as well. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. We'll hear a speech by the Student Union Vice President for Finance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now you will hear the speech. Hello. As VP of Finance, my job is to oversee the spending of our grant to ensure that all areas of student union activity run efficiently and smoothly, without any financial headaches. I have a thoroughly efficient finance team Ursula, Ella and Henrik. We are all here to help you as best as we can. Remember that even though I administer the union's finances, it is ultimately you who has the final say in expenditure policy, either directly through the democratic process of the general meetings or by voicing your opinions through the Executive Finance Committee. I would like to take this opportunity to thank last year's VP Finance, Martin Curry, for his excellent work in improving the financial running of the union to what it is today. Finally, remember to enjoy yourself and to use the union facilities and services to the full. And if you're still not satisfied, come and let us know why. Extra note, in order to maximise my time as VP Finance and to give a more efficient service to students, the Finance Office will only be open to students from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. The Cashier's Office will be open from 12 o'clock noon to
to 2 o'clock p.m. daily. That is the end of part 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.